seems to think that you're staying at the Palace Hotel is a good first step on your, uh, well, on your way to whatever's next. <laughs> so, enjoy. Oh, this room's for me? Yes. Uh, is something wrong? No, no, Renee. It's, it's gorgeous. It's, um, it's incredible. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's, a, you know, too incredible. Oh, not to worry about that. I'm giving you my special former nun rate. Miraculously low. You know what my room at the residence had in it? That nothing. I mean, <laughs> nothing compared to this. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, uh, uh. Easy, boy. You know, I tipped a bus boy and I said I'd take it from here, but it looked much easier when he did it. Is that all mine? Oh, yeah. This is from the residence. These are what you had in storage at Andrews. Yeah. So, 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 what do you think? Is it great or what? <gasps> huh? I feel like I, I fell off this world and landed on another planet. <laughs> Hello, Harry. We'd like a table for two, please. Uh, of course. Right this way. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I had a lousy night sleep last night. I'm so tired. What'd you say? I said that things at home aren't going that well because of Todd's headline. How are you? Um, Hi. Could we please have two mimosas? Thank you. I'm sorry. I know I probably shouldn't order for you, but I know you like them, and I think we could both use a little cheering up. Oh, thanks. But with the way my life is going these days, Cassie, it's going to take a lot. More than a mimosa to cheer me up. Honey, I know you're miserable. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'm going to agree with my mother. Leaving Todd is the best thing you can do. God, I'm good. Briggs, it's me. Who do you have left floating in the reporter's pool? Oh, no, no, absolutely not. Who else? Stearns? Who's that? Never mind. He'll do. Send him up. I need somebody to cover Patrick Thornhart round the clock. See, the moment when they drag that Celtic creep off in handcuffs is coming. And I don't want to miss it. so-called witness had to be somewhere we could hear people yelling on the deck. But I can't fathom where it would have been standing. I, I, I don't yeah, know. Maybe there's no real witness. Just a lot of Todd's money in some liar's pocket. I mean, Todd will go a long way to hurt someone. Yeah. And I played right into his hands when I went after Carla right in front of all those people. Well, hopefully that's somebody friendly. No. Oh, hi. Hi, Marty. Hi. You ready for some pre-Hank prepping? What do you say? You're the lawyer. How's Bo doing? Oh, he's doing well enough for me to be here. They're gonna, they're gonna move him out of ICU soon. Well, that's some good news anyway. Yeah. Well, I'll stop by and see him when I get to the hospital. Um, I think I'm gonna head up. You rounds are starting early today. I've just got something I wanna do beforehand, and I figure I might as well let you two work. Okay, I'll give you a call at the hospital. Okay. Hi. Hi. Thanks. Yeah, bye. So long. You're looking grim. Mm, well, see, I've been in this position before. I know what Hank's like when he goes after his number one suspect and isn't pretty. You're in a lot of trouble, Patrick.
Did you see that bathroom? No, I'll, I'll check it out later. Good. Uh, everything copacetic with the amenities? I mean, we got a fully stocked fridge, wet bar, jacuzzi tub. Max, like Maggie has the best of everything. Good. Renee, I don't, I don't know what to say except thank you. Oh, honey, that's more than most people manage. Um, Maggie, I think that you should take all the time that you need to adjust, and I'm going to leave you alone to settle in, but if you need absolutely anything, don't hesitate to holler. Promise? It's the easiest promise I'll ever have to keep. Good. Enjoy yourself, and, uh, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Let me get that. Strange. Being here? All of it, you know. I mean, uh, wrestling with this um, huge decision for what seemed like an eternity. Uh, all I had to do was open my mouth and say something, and now it's gone, and, and here I am in this really beautiful room, with this really high tech bathroom. Mm. And, uh, and you. Here you are. Right here. So, um, what happens now? Yes, Nora, I know I'm in trouble. Thank you. It's not the past of a carefree man. All right, getting angry is not going to make things better. I'm not angry, but this is not the... This is part of the, this come twisted plan that Todd has to get back at me because of what happened with Blair. Or maybe some smokescreen that's putting up to save his own butt. Patrick, this isn't about Todd. This is about you. You're Hank's number one suspect because you have the strongest motive. You knew he was Poseidon. You knew that he'd order Siobhan's death, and you knew that he'd try to kill you and Marty God knows how many times. You wanted him dead, Patrick. You said so in public. I'm confused here. Either believe me or you do not. If you do not, we have no further business. I believe you. But I also believe in being realistic here. There's, there's a long line of people in this town that wanted Carlo Hesser dead, but Hank's got you in front of it. Because there's a make-believe witness that came out of nowhere. No. It's also because there's a 38. A 38 caliber gun that was in your dresser. The same caliber weapon that, that, that killed Carlo Hesser, and now your gun is missing. It is missing, Nora, because it was stolen. It was taken away by somebody. Now the police think that I, I threw it out a couple of my own tracks. Could this gun get you off the hook? Uh, yes, I think so. I don't think it was ever fired. Well, then we need to find the gun. Why don't you talk to Todd? I'm sure he knows where it is. I want you to find Patrick Thornhart, and I want you to stay on him like a wet blanket until you get your story. So get out of here. And bring a photographer with you. You call this garbage about Patrick journalism? Hello, Marty. What are you trying to do, Todd? You're writing nothing but lies, innuendo, and accusations without a shred of proof to back them up. I don't think they're lies, and I have proof to back everything up. What, your phony witness, one you manufactured? Look, you can believe him or not. It's a free country. Patrick is no killer. So, I can quote you on that? No, what you can do is print a retraction. First thing tomorrow. Look, Marty, you want to be blinded by love, that's fine, but don't let it make you stupid. You really think this poet of yours is a saint? Wise up. He's guilty, and I'm going to prove it, and I'm going to love every minute of it. Being trapped in that cave seemed downright straightforward compared to this. Uh, ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. This is a nicer cave. Ah, we're not trapped. Mm. Maybe stuck a little. But I mean, hey, it's not like I haven't thought about you leaving the church or two of us being alone together. I mm. actually thought of it quite frequently. I, <laughs> this is, uh... It's weird. Yeah. The word is weird. You know, I feel like I'm 14 years old again, and you're a girl I've never been alone with. Well, but... you can relax. My parents are in the other room. <laughs> listening. Mm. My mother is still here, though. My mother superior, that is. I mean, you... Mm. You know, you don't just say that I'm done and oh. uh, stop being sister 
whoever, they have to petition the Vatican and the Pope's got to grant a release, which takes some time. Um, you know, I'm just one little nun in a big, big church. So, till then. But then what, you're just in a kind of limbo? Yeah, you could say someone pushed the pause button. Great, fine, fine, uh, yeah, sure. Oh, hey, you know what, hey, we can make use of this time. We can, uh, we can be like 14-year-olds again. How's that? What do you think, huh? Are you, uh, doing anything tonight? <laughs> Are you asking me out? <laughs> yeah, why not? You're starting your life over. Why not start with the first day? Uh, oh, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm free tonight. It's a date. Yeah, today. Nora, there was a time when I was glad that Todd came back from the dead. Now I'm not sure. Patrick, calm down, will you? I'm... All right. Was it cool and calm, yes, right? Yes, that's right. We have to approach this thing completely dispassionately. Uh, I... If we want Hank to buy the fact that Todd's setting you up, we've got to provide him with a rock-solid motive. Oh, good. Get in time. Hey, Patrick. Yes. Calm. Cool. Just answer the questions. Don't volunteer any information. And follow my lead, please. Okay. Thank you. Hank. Hello, Patrick. Well, Nora. Darling. You're the lucky one who's going to be representing. Yes, I'll be representing Mr. Thorne. Well, that's good, because he's going to need someone in his corner. Ooh, I love those scary, rumbling voice DA scare tactics. There's just noise, Hank. Nora, this is a serious situation. Yes, I know it's a serious situation, but what have you got to make it a serious case? Hmm? A questionable witness with no visual ID of Patrick, who was conveniently discovered by Todd Manning. Oh, please, Hank. Todd Manning has just as much motive to want Carlo Hetzer dead as Patrick does. More so, I think, actually, because... After all, it was Todd Manning, not my client, who had his fingers wrapped around Carlo's neck in full view of a ballroom full of people. You know, you can save your speeches for the jury. Half the people in Lambview had motive and opportunity to kill Carlo Hester, but only one has a missing 38 and a witness placing him at the scene, and that is Patrick. You're wrong, Todd. Patrick is innocent, and I don't know why you're working so hard to prove that he isn't. Well, what does innocent really mean, Marty? I mean, what do you mean when you say that? Do you know? Do you think it really even exists? Well, not when it comes to you, no. Oh, well, there you go. Back to that. That changed my life forever. Yeah, well, mine too. Right after that, I've been busting my butt since then to try and redeem myself. Oh, well, there's a crock for you, redemption. There's no such thing, Marty, and forgiveness either. You know, if I won the Nobel Peace Prize today, do you know what the headline would be? Rapist wins award. It would be the truth. Well, there you go. See, there's proof. Nobody forgives, nobody forgets. And that's fine by me, really. I'm the same way. I can handle all that. An eye for an eye and revenge is sweet, all that stuff. Isn't it? I don't know how you live like this. Doesn't the bitterness ever start to choke you? I tried to change, remember? I went all the way to Ireland. I nearly got killed over it. I took a, a bunch of bullets in the back for your Romeo. And meanwhile, what was he doing? My wife. Where's the justice in that, Marty? What does that tell you about innocence and redemption and forgiveness? Huh? You tell me. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll pick you up in what? In an hour or two or... <gasps> Were you okay? <laughs> I just realized something. What? I've, I've never really been on a, a real date. You know, a date <laughs> date, where the guy shows up at the door and he, and he says hello to my parents and then he, you know, he, he whisks uh -huh. me off and pays for everything. You're kidding. No, I'm serious. You know, when I was in high school, I'd watch those sitcoms and I'd see the guys coming up to the door with the goofy grin and the flowers and I'd look at it and I'd think, what is that? <sighs> No, the guys I ran around with in high school, I, I usually had to meet, like, at the gas station or behind the railroad yards or something. Oh, I see. Not the sort of guy you want to run past your bishop, huh? Oh, you got it. Especially since I was invariably wearing something, shall we say, dramatic. Ooh, gotcha. So, 
I suppose you had a date every night, huh? Ah, not every night, but, uh, you know, I had to make myself available to those in need whenever possible. Oh, give Of course, me a sometimes break. they needed to be convinced that they might have some need. <laughs> Mary Ann the Chest Carter, for one. Oh, but, excuse uh, me? Who uh, sorry, sorry. Date from hell. This girl, she had eyes. I know. Eyes that would make a young boy howl, oh. I swear, and hair down her skin. Let me tell you about her skin. And you know what? I think I got the picture. Yeah, what? You didn't even get the first base with her. What? <laughs> <laughs> I knew, well, she was very religious. She was uh, evangelical. Oh, yeah. from evangelical to yeah. a nun. That's full circle, I think. Yeah, well, except you're getting a divorce from the church. Hey, why are we talking about this anyway? We're going to have a great time tonight. We are. We're going to have a real date. Your, your first real date. Uh, should I bring you flowers? Or? No, don't be silly. Well, sometimes silly is not so silly. <sighs> Just bring yourself and... I'll see you in an hour or so. Great. Okay. You will be wearing something dramatic. Get out! this mimosa for you. No, it is fine. I'm just not in the bubbly mood, and I am a lousy, a lousy company today. I'm sorry. Oh, as if I miss Mary Sunshine. So, come on. <laughs> How's Andrew? He's hurt, Blair. It's as if I've killed something inside of him. Well, come on. He loves you. What can you say? I know, but... I don't know. Well, you know what, Cassie? You can't kill love that easily. I mean, well, look at it this way. At least you didn't just get crazy and rip your clothes, throw them at you, and call you a whore. No, fortunately, Andrew doesn't have the kind of temper that Todd no. does, and luckily, not many people do. I felt awkward, really awkward, leaving you there yesterday. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. I took your advice and left exactly when Hank left. I mean, but you have to look at it through Todd's eyes. I mean, here he was. He comes back from Ireland with... He'd been expecting this dream that he has been dreaming comes back and it's all wrong and he wakes up in this nightmare he just he can't cope that's all I... look i i know I keep apologizing for him would you look at this i practically ate everything on my plate mm, love mm. this I'm afraid that's a sure sign of depression yeah so i want to ask you something mm -hmm. i can't wait to find out this information so, what's going on with you and Kevin? Nothing is going on with me and Kevin. Really? Okay, okay. Another question. What are you gonna do about Andrew? I'm going to love him. And I'm going to hope that he'll find a way to forget about all this. What are you gonna do about Todd? I'm gonna... Find a way to live without him. Again. I get it. Oh, this is all starting to make sense. I'm happy for you. When I first saw you, when you came back to life, and I saw you at Vicky's cabin, I couldn't figure it out. Why were you staying there and not going home to Blair? It's because you knew she was seeing Patrick. Seeing? I've heard it called a lot of things. Actually, Marty, I was the one who was doing the scene. What do you mean? I came straight home. You did? Yep, straight from the airport, fresh right back from the dead. Only the first thing that I laid eyes on when I opened my front door was my lovely wife, sandwiched between the carpet and the guy that I took the bullets for. Everyone thought you were dead. So? But Blair and I had something before I died, a connection, a, a bond, whatever you want to call it. And she tore it to pieces with a little help from your Irish boy toy. That's not true. Marty, doesn't it bother you that Patrick was, was kind of living it up on, the, on, the, on my living room floor with another woman? I happened to be married to someone else at the time. All right, Dylan. Yeah, well, Dylan, what can you say about Dylan? Dylan, what a pistol. Not exactly a lot of action in the sack when it comes to him. Oh, you are disgusting! But, uh, of course, it was torture for you, wasn't it? Night after night, going without. 
And uh, the whole time, everybody knows that what you really wanted to do was be seeing Patrick. Stop it. But he wasn't tortured, was he? No, you see, because he was burning the sheets up with good old Blair. Was... All right, one more time. No, I did not kill Carlo Hesser. The last time I saw Carlo Hesser, he was alive in the ballroom. Now, I've told you five bloody times, why don't you write it down, Hank? I've got it. And I've also got that you took a gun from Blair at the time her child was kidnapped, and you took it home for safekeeping. Yes. And that's the last time I thought about the bloody thing until this business came up. I see, and now the gun has mysteriously disappeared. No, I didn't say that. I never said mysterious at all. Todd Manning took the gun, or did somebody take it? Why? <clears throat> because he wants to frame me for Carlo Hesser's murder, Hank. Well, you know, speaking of Todd Manning, he did confirm that you ran into each other in the ship's corridor. And he said when he blamed you for the lights going out, that you blew up at him, and you said you didn't need this now. And, uh, let's see, I'm quoting here, not after what I've had to do tonight. What I meant was taking the gun away, the gun from the man who just shot my best friend, Bo Buchanan, who's dying in the hospital. I thought I'd get the gun away from him so he doesn't shoot anybody else. Okay, Hank is just trying to do his job. Yeah. Listen, Patrick, I've been sifting through the facts here, you know, what everyone said, and I've come, come up with a, my own take of what might have happened. I'd like to run that by you. I suppose I've got no choice. Mm-hmm. All right, this is the way it goes. You testified you saw Bo get shot. A bullet that you know damn well was meant for Marty. Now, we've already established that you came into the ballroom red hot looking for Carlo Hesser. When you found him, you threatened to kill him in front of everyone there, and then you stormed out in a rage. Agreed? My client laughed. Please dispense with the characterizations. Well, here's what might have happened next. When the lights went out, you went out on the deck to try to get a hold of yourself, but still furious. The last person in the world you wanted to run into was Carlo. Feeling a little lightheaded? What's the matter, Professor? Has your Irish eloquence abandoned you without an audience to hear your flaccid ranting? You have no heart. You're a bloody monster. I said I'd kill you. And so help me God, I will. You'll never get the better of me. You're wrong. Dead man. You know damn well that could have happened. How about it, Patrick? Let go. violent in your old age. I'm not who I used to be, if that's what you mean, Todd. I'm not running scared. I'm not your victim anymore. All right. You may not know what innocence means, but I know what evil is. And when I see it, I fight. Look, Marty, you... you may not believe this, but I'm not trying to do any of this to hurt you. Oh, all right. You're doing this out of deep concern for me. Yeah, in a weird way. I just think that you have a blind spot when it comes to Patrick Thornhart, and you need to watch out. This is a warning? Why do you think about it? Do you really know for 100% that the man of your dreams didn't blow anybody away? Are you formally charging my client with the murder of Carlo Hesser? Well, right now, it's just yes, a matter of... Yes, no, Hank. No, not at this time. Then at this time, we have nothing more to say. All right, fine, Nora. You want to play hardball? We'll do that. 
You'll be hearing from me. Formally. Nora, you know I... You listen to me. I'm your lawyer. I call the shots. And you trust me, okay? Thank you. Hank, Hank, what are you hitting them with? Murder one? Excuse me, excuse me. No comment. They didn't arrest you yet? You want to call? I've got a comment for you. You go back to your boss and tell him that the truth will out. You got me? The truth will out. What are you doing? Do you want to get charged with assault on top of everything else? Oh, that was beautiful. You took a Sun reporter and held him up while the photographer was snapping pictures of you. What, are you crazy? Little creep deserved it. And you'll deserve it when Todd plasters that picture all over the front page of the sun, showing you to be every inch the guilty, violent suspect. Sorry, I lost my head. You lost your head. Why don't you go run up a mountain, or go ride a horse, or do whatever it is that you do to blow off steam? Because if you ever get in a situation like that again and you can't keep control, you are going to be in a lot more trouble than you already are. Do you understand? I can't believe I still have these. I can't believe I ever had them in the first place. Wow. Hey, it's not fair. Hold it. You can't tell me you're going to pick me up later than pick me up 20 minutes. Daddy. Hello, Maggie. What are you doing here? Waiting for an invitation to come in at the moment. Oh, sure. Sorry. Please. I got your letter. Oh, I know. Um, I should have phoned. Leaving your order is an important decision. <sighs> I know, but the, to be honest with you, Dad, I, I... The idea of seeing you made me a little queasy, so... How honest do you want to be, Maggie? What do you mean, Dad? I wonder if it's me you're having trouble facing or yourself. Oh, <laughs> you know, that's good. The carpenter code is right on cue. I'm not following. Oh, come on. You drove a long way to say I told you so. Why do you always have to think the worst of me? You know, Daddy, why don't you just, just cut the polite stuff, okay? Why don't you just admit it? You came up here for one reason and one reason only, to tell me that I screwed up again. Didn't you? Being a nun hasn't changed you much. Or your wardrobe. Look, Dad, I'm, I'm sorry that I snapped at you two seconds after you walked through the door. It'd hardly be the first time. You know what? How about we, we pop this conversation into neutral and just start over? Do you really think that's possible? Look, Dad, it's just that I feel really embarrassed. About leaving the order? Yeah. You were so against it from the beginning, and yet you still showed up at my commitment ceremony, and it kills me. I admit it took some doing to accept your embracing of Catholicism, much less your becoming a bride of Christ. I thought, I hoped that making that decision to become a nun took some strength of character on your part and you had found something to give your life some meaning that it never seemed to have something to latch on to something to make you happy yeah daddy i did too what happened well i guess i i had to become a nun in order to realize that the life in, a, in the church just isn't the right path for me you know what is the right path for you? I don't know. I'm still checking the maps. But I, I do know this, Dad. I'm not lost. You know, it was the right move. But you thought that joining the Order was the right move for you. Now you say that leaving the Order was the right move. Yeah, it was. That's my Maggie. You know, you've always thought you were right. No matter what you did. Whether it was riding your motorcycle up the aisle of the church while I was giving a sermon, or betting one man after another, or binging on alcohol and God knows what else. It, it's not what was right. It's what was right in front of you. You know what? 
That is a really lousy thing to say. Well, then tell me what's changed, please. Well, now I've experienced both heaven and hell, Dad. <sighs> Obviously, that answer wasn't good enough for you, but then again, that's your Maggie, too, right? You know, I don't know that I can really explain it to you right now. I don't, even to myself. So I guess I'm just going to have to go on record as letting you down yet once again. Maggie, forget letting me down. It's your life that's a shambles. Mine, I am not a total wreck, all right? But what are you, Maggie? Do you know? I don't know, and I don't think you do either. But until you find whatever it is on God's green earth that's going to make you happy, I'm afraid you're never going to amount to much. I'm sorry I've upset you. That wasn't my intention. Oh, no, of course not. Can I? No. Mm -mm. I'm staying at the Waterside Inn. If you want to talk. Happy, Daddy? I'll give you happy. You think I want to stand here and defend Patrick to you? You're wrong. I said what I came to say. I'm leaving. Fine, you want to go, go. You want to stay, stay. I don't care. Look, I'll tell you something right now. You're living in a dream world if you think you know Patrick Thornhart. I do know him. Yeah, you see, that's where you're wrong. And I'd hate to say dead wrong, Marty. I just want you to be careful, all right? People who cozy up to that little heartthrob, they have a way of ending up in the obituaries. Bingo! What you got? Exactly the story you want on Patrick Thornhart. What story? What have you done to Patrick now? Mm, that was so good. I ate the whole thing. <laughs> Must have been a jillion calories. Blair, your body wants what it wants. You know, you probably have been so stressed out, you haven't been eating well for days or weeks. Excuse me. Uh, hi. I need a table for two for tonight. Something a little private, please. Uh, yeah, I have, um, just the thing uh, near the fireplace, the low lights. All right, sounds great. Thank you. Patrick Wade, I... Look, I want to apologize. Oh, do you now? Yes, I mean, I just feel awful with everything that's, that Todd has done implicating you in it like this. I mean, mm -hmm. all those awful stories and, right. and the paper and everything. And you telling the police that I had your gun, that didn't help No, no, you. no, Patrick, that, that was a mistake. That just slipped out, I mean, really. Of course. No, I told Hank that there wasn't any way possible that you could have killed Carlo. Patrick, hey, I'm on your side. What's that old saying with friends like you who needs what enemies? Patrick. No. Thanks to you and thanks to your husband, Todd, I'm the one suspect in a murder I didn't commit. Can you do me a favor? Stay out of my life, please. Well, now I know why I hung on to these. I'm sorry, I must have the wrong room. Excuse me, I was looking for Maggie Carpenter. Oh! So much for a gradual transition. Uh, well, um, you didn't dress like this on retreats, did you? No, no talk of retreats, only advances, you know? Life is too short, you make mistakes, you move on, simple. So let's move. Whoa, hold it. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait just a minute. What's going on here? Nothing. That's why we're going out. No, no, no. I know you, Maggie. And you don't go into hyperdrive unless something's really bothering you. I'll give this man a prize for perception. Guess who uh, dropped by to throw around his pall of guilt and righteousness? Oh, uh, 
Your father? Oh, he was so hot tonight, which is a good thing, because we got a date. No, no, I, I don't understand this. I thought he would be relieved that you left the Catholic Church. No, no, he's on to bigger and better disappointments, like why I couldn't stick with it, which, of course, I couldn't, so what could I say to him? But you know what, Pops, you're right. I'm a total screw-up on the divine level this time. Maybe we, maybe we should just call this off, maybe no. go another night. No, no. Absolutely not, no. No way. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Don't I look it? Max, come on. First of all, if my father thinks I, I goofed up on them, then fine. That's the one thing I genuinely do well. And second, he told me that I had to find what makes me happy. And by God, for the first time in his straight and narrow life, he was absolutely right. Now... I hear that you're an expert on having fun. And fun makes me happy, okay? So come on. Let's go find some. So go ahead, Stearns. Tell Miss Saybrook all about it. She has a right to know about the man she loves. She can read about it in the next edition of The Sun. Anyway, here you go. Look at that. Oh, my God. It's in perfect focus, his creepy little face. He's about to beat somebody up. Who was that? Uh, me. You got roughed up for this? Nice job. You're sick. Sending someone after Patrick, not leaving him alone for a minute. Well, get used to it, Marty. He's news, and news is my life. In fact, I just came up with a headline for the next edition. Poet proves penchant for violence.